you are trying to teach a child to read for the very first time and you are overwhelmed, confused, intimidated, not sure where to start, do not feel alone. I have been there so I know exactly how you feel and uh, it can be very daunting. Or if you've taught a child to read in the past and you have another child that you need to teach how to read but you weren't really loving the curriculum that you were using, you want something that's a little bit more simple, straightforward, to the point, I have it just what you're looking for, or at least I hope I do. So this is the Abeka Handbook for Reading. As you can see, it is very well-loved and a well-used book, and it's for good reason this works. I'm a homeschooling mom of three, fourth grade, second grade, and kindergarten. Um, my oldest, who is in fourth grade, went to kindergarten at a private school, and this was the book that she used. And then for my second, my middle, I have always homeschooled her from preschool uh, through kindergarten and up to second grade. So for her kindergarten year, I did not, I started with a formal curriculum, but quickly realized that it wasn't working for us. And uh, I am super familiar with Becca. I used it all my life. I think Becca has a phenomenal phonics program, a reading program, and I highly recommend it. So this is what we used to teach my daughter to read. This is it, that's all it was, nothing else. This was the only true teacher guide handbook that I used. We used some sh some worksheets along the way that I'll kind of share briefly toward the end. Um, you know, worksheets are pretty much part of almost every single curriculum you're gonna do. But as far as uh, a teacher guide, this was it. So again, she's in second grade. She is a very, very strong reader. We did this two years ago um, and it, it worked really well for us. All right, so here we have the handbook for reading and here there is an alphabet. Now they do have separate alphabet cards and they do correspond with this. So you can get the flash cards if you'd like, or you can use this as a reinforcement. We didn't use the flash cards. I would suggest starting here, okay, with the consonants. And they have you review the vowel sounds every single day. And then this is where they teach the blends. Ooh, ah, la. Ooh, eh, le, ooh, eh, le. And that way you go through this and then this is the blend ladder. You can do up and down or whichever you prefer. You could do, just do one or the other. But, um, and then that's all we would do for that day. And then she would do a little worksheet. Then the next day, review the consonant or the vowel sounds. T, a, ta, t, a, te, t, i, t. The child may say, ooh, eh, le, and then you say, yeah, let, let if they're not there yet. It's totally up to you how you decide to use it. But they are going to be, as you can see, doing all types of uh, blends. And uh, so this, the directions are, so these, these are the review. The directions are to read either, um, read across. So la, or a, la, ta, ba, e, la, ta, be, and then down. A, e, e, a, a, la, la, le, la, la. So that way they can get two different ways of how they're doing it. Now, I will say we I never made her do across and down. It was just too much for her. But you have to remember, Abeka writes their, um, their program, their curriculum for Christian schools, but a lot of homeschoolers use it. So this is probably, I, I can't say for sure, but this is probably meant for like a classroom. So a small kindergarten group or first grade group who are doing these. So again, I just made her do one either across or down, not both. Then, um, and there was times where we didn't even do these. We would just kind of skip it. I would just make sure she focused on the actual uh, blends. But eventually she got the hang of it and she got better. So you can see how long they do these blends for, which is really good. I like that they take their time. And then they slowly start to introduce sight words. They do not introduce a bunch of sight words. The sight, only sight words I believe they introduce at this point are the and uh, the letter A, uh. So it's going to be this layout for the entire, there's little different colored sections at the top here, which I'll get to in just a second. So for this green section, it's gonna strongly focus on vowel recognition, short vowel recognition that is, as well as blends and then some CVC words. The sight words are uh and the. Okay, and then you're getting to the end. So they have a word challenge here and a word challenge here. So now we're getting into the long vowels. And again, these, um, 
these correspond to the flashcards. So if you want to get flashcards to kind of reinforce and just uh, practice those, your child needs a little bit of work, by all means, go for it, but you don't have to. So as you can see, that was quite a number of pages. We're on to page 40 already before they even introduce long vowels. I really like that personally because I feel like the, the short vowels are really hard for some children to understand, especially because they get so, um, they're so similar in sound that I really feel like the, the short vowels need to be mastered first before you start on with the long vowels because then it's kind of a little bit confusing. That's just my opinion and how my experience has been. Um, I'm sure it's different for everybody, but that's just for me. I, I personally think uh, short vowel mastery is, is important before long vowels. So again, they're reviewing the short vowels and you can see up here, it's the little like smiley face. Abeka is going to have the child mark consonants. Uh, I'm sorry, mark vowels. So um, if you get the workbook, you can, uh, I'll show you how that works. So the short vowels have the little smiley, the long vowels have the line. Um, so that's just how they can recognize that. Now there is some review in here. So again, some of this is self-explanatory. A lot of it is, but they do have these rules. So you want to make sure the child has that rule. And that way, what I really like about this is that, so for this word can, um, they have the, they're, they're marking the vowel already short for this one cane, they cross off that E meaning the E is silent. So the child can see, oh, this is crossed off and it gives them several pages of that working like that to see, oh, wait a second, this is short, this is long. And I think all those little things really, really help cement, um, cement those, those reading concepts in their, in their brain. So you can see here, they just continue to help the child cross off and they will do that in the worksheets as well. So again, we just did one page a day. I didn't do multiple pages. We literally just did one page a day and then she did her worksheet and that is it. That is all I did. We had some of the Becker readers that were uh, left over, but, um, but that just reinforced what she was learning. It didn't necessarily teach her. So now we're on to the charts. There, there's, um, I believe seven charts. This says chart six, but it's really, honestly the first chart and what these ch charts are is the phonics the phonics rules slash abeka calls them special sounds um so if you see the word special sound that's all it is so we reviewed these once she got to this chart she was very very excited um because she was like oh this is you know big girl stuff so we would do these every day k in duck some people say ck says k in duck i didn't do that um it's probably better if you do because the Becca says for them to, you know, G L glue and glue, spelling it out loud helps them become a better speller and a faster reader. So you can, but I had already started like that. So she didn't really, I, and it was fine. It, it all worked out, but yeah. So you can either say tur in train or T R says tur in train, uh, however you want to go about it. But we did these every day. So you would do, just one time of these and then I would go and do, so this first one, CK and duck, she would do that and then read all of the words and then she'd get to read a little story at the end. And then the next one, E and me, O and go, I and fly. And then, so actually those were three in a row, okay? And what it does is it does go through and Becca does an amazing job of, of uh, incorporating uh, review. So you see this, so here's uh, A and pray. So these are the words that they have. A and pray, now see we, that was the one that they learned yesterday. So you can see here that it just goes through every day they're learning a new special sound, uh, learning new words that, uh, you know, incorporate those special sounds. But again, we were reviewing each day. So we did that until she pretty much had mastered it. Uh, this is the chart six review. If she could read all of these words, then I had her go through and start chart seven. And again, she was always excited to start a new chart. So I'm just gonna go through here so that you can get an idea.
so I believe by the end of her kindergarten year, by the time we did all of the, um, the blends and the short vowels and learned the long vowels and then started the charts, I believe we only went up to chart eight, which was fine. So she did all the way. So by the end of kindergarten, she was reading these types of words. And then first grade is when she finished chart, um, she did review chart six through eight, but first grade is when she really did chart nine through 13 as well. So again, because I didn't go by a curriculum, I didn't go by their teacher lesson plans, this is just kind of where we stopped at the end of the year. There was no rhyme or reason for it. Just the school year had ended, and so she had, was a pretty good reader uh, by the end of kindergarten. So I'll just go through and you can see what the charts look like, or I'm sorry, the words look like. here they're reading some pretty big words towards the end whole paragraphs and things like that and again this was not necessarily meant for kindergarten um, like at this point <laughs> this is definitely meant for like first second grader first grader I would say towards the end of the year for first grade okay and then here you go here is all of the charts right here so these are those charts that uh that you saw in the book and they are just a bigger version of that um there's a few like blend type things here but mostly what you'll be using is these so you can see that they're in um, manuscript and in cursive and again i did not use these for her first grade year i did pick them up i'm sorry for her kindergarten year i did pick them up for first grade they're nice but they're definitely not necessary you they're all in that handbook for reading this is just like a bigger version of that i got them so it'd be a little bit quicker and more accessible okay so here we have the letters and sounds this is the abeka kindergarten workbook that corresponds uh it's their language arts workbook going to start off pretty slowly with just the vowels and then it's going to work into blends just like with the handbook for reading as you can see here so for example circle the blend you hear at the beginning of the word so lips is it is it t, -i -t or u -i -li? and they have to circle the blend that they hear They'll be doing that for quite a while before they introduce the short vowel words. So here they go. And uh, lesson 42 in the classwork. So you're, you're doing quite, you have several weeks under your belt um, before they even get to these CVC words. So you can go as fast paced or slow paced as you like, depending on your child. Um, if you need something, if you want to have a gentler and slower start, then this is good. But if you want to speed up, you feel like they're past the blends and they're ready to start this, you can go at an even, you know, quicker rate. So what I would do, they're still on the short vowel words. They'll start doing the long vowel words in just a little bit. So what I would do is I would look ahead at the worksheet because like I said, again, oh my God, hold on, pause. Isn't these the cutest when they have to like draw pictures of a calf? That was her calf, that was her rug. Oh, it makes me smile, that was a doll. Those are my favorite. Um, anyway, so I, so I would look ahead and say, okay, when we get to, you know, in about five pages, they are going to be of introducing the long vowel words, that is when I would make sure like, okay, I want to make sure that she has learned the long vowel words and we've introduced that in the handbook for reading before. I don't want her to get to a worksheet and be like, what is this? I can't do this. I've never seen this before. So I would just, that's how, how I would kind of go with it. I would kind of look at this as more of a guide to make sure I was keeping up on pace to make sure they were succinct. All right, so as you can see here, um, as I was talking about, mark the vowels and read the words. So you can see that in this book, they give you an example and then she had to do them. So mark the long vowel, cross off the silent E. 
And what I did is I just made sure of like two or three days in advance that we were at that point. And so if you need to slow down or pick up or rearrange or adjust, there will be a little bit of that, but it's really very, very doable. Um, just look for this as kind of your guide as to where you're gonna be headed next. Then um, the same thing for the charts when we were, so as you can see here, circle the special sounds. A and pray, so she's got to read those and then circle the special sounds. I would make sure, okay, on, you know, in two or, you know, three or four or five pages, whatever it is, we are going to be starting with special sounds. I wanted to make sure that I had introduced that in the handbook for reading. So if you need to take a break or from this for a day or so to make sure you can catch up, that is fine as well but that way it flows nicely. So they've been, in this case, they've been introduced to the special sounds for several days before they see it in their worksheet. So more, marking the vowels, reading the words. Ah, some more cute little pictures. Okay, so um, again, I've already done a whole review on the entire kindergarten program, if you, and I will link that down below, but this specifically is just teaching how I taught, or I'm sorry, pointing out how I taught her to read with just the handbook for reading and how I corresponded it with this book. And that is all I did. For each chart, I made sure we were at that point before, you know, we had at least introduced the chart one or two, maybe three times before she had to do it in the workbook. And that built her confidence way up because she had already seen it, she was familiar with it, and now it was time for her to um, incorporate it. Okay, we're getting near the end. They are um, reading sentences, paragraphs at this point. Still doing lots of circular. So you can see how um, how spiral it is. They're still focusing on the special sounds. They're still marking the vowels. They're doing a little bit of sentences and you know reading the word that completes the sentence. So it's not like oh you already learned that. Let's move on into something else. They're constantly going back and reevaluating. Now, lastly, I want to show you see. This was my this was my oldest one to kindergarten way back in 2018. Um, so I kind of use these and they correspond. You don't have to use these Abeka readers, you really don't. But if you're gonna be using a Becca, I just figure, you know, you need readers anyway. You may as well get the ones that are gonna correspond with this. And um, because they're gonna teach, see the same way, say they have the blend ladders there. Every single thing from their readers to their workbook to their handbook for reading, every single thing lines up. They're meant to flow together and to work, you know, like synergistically together. Okay, so there's different, there's um, I learned to read, and then there's I do read, and then there's I can read well, and these are what they're gonna be looking, reading towards the end of the year. So let me show you. She finished this 427, so this was towards the end of the school year. She was reading words like this. And Alexia, it's actually really funny. I'm glad the teacher put the date on there because I just so happened to get the readers and she just happened, she was always, always on track. So yes, by the end of April, Lexi, just using this handbook for reading, nothing else, was able to read all of this by the end of kindergarten. She was not behind her sister in any way. Okay, so just in conclusion, this is all my daughter used uh, for her kindergarten year to learn to read. She used the handbook for reading, that was the guide. I was the teacher, but this was the guide. This was the reinforcement, and then these are the readers. And um, you kind of, obviously, you need the hand, you know, the workbooks, and you need readers as well. But this was all we used. Very basic, very simple, very straightforward. No complications, no frills, to the point. It got the job done, and it did a really, really great job. So I hope you found this helpful. I hope um, that if you are, oh, you know, faced with the very overwhelming task of teaching a child to read and you just don't know where to start. I hope that this at least gave you a little bit of an idea that it does not have to be overwhelming. 
um, it can be doable and uh, it, it can be done on a very simple and basic but yet effective way. And I feel like that is my, if I can get all three of those in one, in one curriculum, then it's like, oh, it checks off all my boxes. So hopefully if you feel the same way and that's kind of what you're looking for, I really recommend getting yourself a handbook for reading. And then if you get the Abeka um, workbooks that go along with it, then they will supplement each other beautifully. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. If you have not subscribed already, but you love to see this type of homeschooling content, please make sure you stick around. Also, if you found the video helpful, I would love if you hit that little like button. Uh, it just helps my channel out a little bit. Leave a comment below if there's any questions, any any concerns. Um, you can feel free to send me a message on Instagram or email me. Both both of those are down below in my description. Um, if you want to talk more like one on one, I would be happy to answer any of those questions. So thanks again. I hope you have the best day. Until next time, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm.